As many of us know, lithium iron phosphate batteries have become extremely popular for use in electric bikes, vehicles, robotics, portable power stations, and much more. The only drawback is the much higher cost compared to lead acid and other batteries. What I decided to do was look online for low cost lithium iron phosphate cells that were high capacity and had very high buyer satisfaction ratings. After searching for a while, I came across these 32700 cells, 7000 milliamp hour rating, 3.2 nominal voltage, made by Lito Kala in China. The part number is LII-70A. Now, I'm not a huge fan of batteries made in China, as you've heard me say in previous videos, but for the ridiculously low cost for four of these, for only $16 shipped, I figured, you know what, let me just go for it, I'll buy it, I'll test them out, this way you guys know if it's worth buying or not. I am not affiliated in any way with AliExpress, so I just want to get that out in the open first. Now, the only drawback with purchasing these on AliExpress is that it was definitely on the slow boat from China. It took five and a half weeks for these cells to arrive. The average buyer rating for these cells was around 4.7 stars out of five regarding the performance of these cells. Now before I start taking different measurements and testing the battery capacity to see how close it is to the 7,000 milliamp hour rating, actually on the website it says 6,500 to 7,000 milliamp hours. So when I test these, we're going to see how close they are to that rating. The good thing about lithium iron phosphate batteries, they're environmentally friendly. They have a very low self-discharge. Of course, how much the self-discharge is dependent upon temperature. So higher temperatures will increase how much they discharge and lower temperatures will decrease how much they discharge over time. Lithium ion batteries have a higher operating voltage range and the nominal voltage for lithium ion batteries is right around 3.6 or 3.7 volts. So a fully charged lithium ion battery is going to be around 4.2 and you very rarely want to drain a lithium ion battery below 3 volts. So right here you can see 3.2 volts. When this is fully charged it's going to be around 3.6 and many manufacturers of e-bikes, portable power stations and many other things will allow these batteries to drain down to around 2.5 volts, but the typical range is between 2.8 volts and 3.6. I'm going to be performing three different battery capacity tests. The first one is going to be using a 400 milliamp drain. The second one is going to be a 1500 milliamp drain. And the last one is going to be a 3000 milliamp drain. That way you can see how these cells perform under different load conditions. Now lead acid batteries are not designed to be discharged more than 50%. If you discharge them more than 50%, you're going to greatly reduce the lifespan of that battery. And as we all know, they don't last too long as it is. Maybe you'll get three years out of a lead acid battery. And these right here are designed to last up to 10 years. For a lithium iron phosphate battery, they're designed to be discharged or the depth of discharge can be all the way up to 100%. Based on 100% depth of discharge, you can expect around 2,000 cycles compared to 2 to 400 for a lead acid battery. If you only discharge the cell by 80% instead of 100, you would increase the life of that cell by approximately 50%. You would end up with around 3,000 cycles. If you discharge it the same amount as a lead acid battery, 50%, then the life expectancy would be around 5,000 cycles which is two and a half times longer than discharging it by 100%. If you only discharge it by 30%, you can expect around 8,000 cycles from that lithium iron phosphate cell. A couple more benefits to having a lithium iron phosphate battery is that it has a higher discharge rate due to a lower internal resistance. By having a lower internal resistance, it will also charge faster. This cell here was designed to operate between minus 20C, which is minus 4F, and 60C, which is 140F. So it's a very wide temperature range for that cell. Let's take a quick look at the specifications for these cells from AliExpress's website. All right, so if you look at the specifications right here, you're going to see where it says nominal capacity, 7 amp hour, and next to it, 6.5 amp hour, and it says, welcome to test it, and you can bet we're going to be doing that. 
Battery dimensions, 32 by 70 millimeter, or one and a quarter inches by two and three quarter inches. We're going to be weighing the batteries to see how close they are to the 145 grams. Internal resistance, less than eight milliohm. Cycle life is more than 2,000 times with a depth of discharge at 80%. Input charging voltage, 3.65, and input charging current is three amps. Continuous discharge current is 30 amps. Maximum current discharge, 6C. Discharge cutoff voltage is 2.5. Okay, let's take a look at the weight of these cells. Okay, let's check each one. One hundred and forty, almost one hundred and forty-five grams for that one. All right, very close. One forty-four point six. All right, next one. One forty-four point eight. And the last one. Just a hair heavier than the other ones. Possible there's more heat shrink on here, but they're all very close. Okay, let's take a look at the voltage. 3.291 for that one. This one right here. 3.285. All right. Let's try this one now. 3.278 and the last one 3278 okay now let's measure the internal resistance for each one of the cells keep in mind the internal resistance of the cell will vary based on the state of charge all right that one was 1213 now this one 1112 milliohm. Now this one 1112. Okay, now the last battery 1314. Right now we're just a little higher than the manufacturer states. So what I'm going to do is after this is fully charged, we're going to come back to this test to see what the reading is. To charge these up, I'm going to be using the charger you see right here. It's a multi-purpose charger, and the charging output only goes up to 1.5 amps, so I will be using the highest setting according to the manufacturer. You can go up to 0.5C, so 0.5C would be between 3 amps and 3.5 and amps. So we're going to be charging at 1.5 amps. The charging station was designed for lithium iron phosphate batteries that were just a little smaller than this, but luckily it does fit inside that holder and it will charge just fine. So let me fully charge these batteries and come right back. Okay, the cell is now fully charged. Let's see if the internal resistance is any lower to get it closer to the eight milliohms or less that the manufacturer states. And as you just saw, the reading is now a little bit lower. It's between eight and nine milliohms. And I did check the other cell that I charged up, and it was between 7 and 8. So it's within range when fully charged. Now the first test is going to be done using this battery analyzer. The battery analyzer can check the capacity of this lithium iron phosphate battery. The only problem is it could do it up to 400 milliamps. So what I'm going to do is place this in the unit, set it up for lithium iron phosphate, and I'm going to put this to the side because it's going to take probably 15, 16 hours before the testing has been completed. So while this unit is analyzing, let's go on to the next test. I'm going to be applying a 1.5 amp load. The reading you're going to see here is accurate. I double checked it with this meter, but the voltage here is a little off. So you wanna keep an eye on this meter right here. We're going to keep a close eye on this reading when it drops to 2.8 volts with that one and a half amp load, the test is over. Then we're going to repeat the test using another cell, using a three amp load. Here we go.
Okay, and that is it. We went all the way down to 2.8 volts, and it took 4 hours and 13 minutes. So let's calculate this. And what do we have? 6,324 milliamp hours. That's pretty darn good. Okay, let's go on to the 3,000 milliamp test. Okay, the cell is in position. 3.607 volts. I'm going to turn this knob and set it for 3 amps. Here we go. Okay guys, that was 2 hours and 7 minutes. Let me calculate this. So that's 2.116 hours multiplied by 3,000. And right here you can see 6,348 milliamp hours. So the batteries definitely perform well. They're very close to specification. The only thing I don't know is over time how this is going to act when you cycle it over and over. But it definitely has a capacity and internal resistance that's very close to manufacturer specifications. Okay, let's take a look at the cell and the battery analyzer to see how that did. And as you can see, it did extremely well. 6,451 milliamp hours. You can see I took the reading at 2.79. The unit will test all the way down to 2.7 volts. In the center you can see 959 and the reason for that, the clock will not go above 10 hours because this analyzer was not intended to test cells of this capacity. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, share with friends, as well as on social networking websites. Thank you very much for watching.